Hey everyone, I'm Sebastian with Performance Play Sports Care. Uh, we're going to cover a groin pain or front of hip pain series right around here on YouTube today. Uh, the series is part of a lot of questions that we get, um, either that you've asked us, we've seen on forums, or people on uh, Google have searched about groin pain recovery and just general questioning. And so we're going to do. A, I'm going to do my very best to answer as many questions as I possibly can. This play, playlist will continue to grow, and we have uh, 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 timestamps within the video, so you can take advantage of just kind of scrolling around as as you need be. Um, at any point in time, if you uh, want help from us, you just links below. Uh, we have free resources as well. We'd love to help you out. We have virtual or in-person services. Um, I'm going to take the questions right here. Uh, why? The first one is, why does my groin hurt when walking? Uh, number two is, does a groin strain hurt when you walk? Interesting one. Uh, how do I know if my groin pain is serious? Um, I actually answered that third one in another one, so I'm going uh, to forego that one. We're going to go to a new one. Uh, what's the fastest way to relieve groin pain? Well, Okay, so we're gonna cover those three. Um, the first one, again, why does my groin pain hurt with walking? There can be a few reasons for this. Um, in another video that I did, I talked about movements that can create the, uh, kind of pick, uh, pick the scab or, or create uh, triggering of the problem. There are some uh, people who have more groin pain with things like flexing the hip, like sitting in this position, bringing the knee up, bringing the knee up, squatting down, um, uh, uh, goblet squats, front squats, back squats, and so on. There's other people that actually don't really have any problem with squatting, um, and this feels perfectly fine to them, but when they do things like this, when they extend their hip back or go to the side or start walking or running, they start to feel stuff in the front side here. Now, for people in this situation, a lot of times, uh, similar to the other one, I like to use an approach of do the opposite. I think the body really does a really, it's, it's all, we can make it really complicated with diagnosis and, you know, tricky things and so on. But generally speaking, uh, I, most of the time, at least in my observation is whatever bothers it, do the opposite for a little bit and somewhere meet in the middle. Um, it doesn't mean avoid doing anything like walking. It just means like do a little bit of the opposite. What is the opposite of walking? At least from a hip and hip and body perspective. Um, we know that from, uh, if we go here with walking, there's a lot of extension, extension, extension. Even the, even the upper back is extending a little bit too. Um, so maybe the easiest thing is just do the opposite, which is rounding. Okay. We call this a door jam squat um, because there's a door jam that could be here that you just relax and round. Uh, the, the point of the door jam is to allow you to sit back into your feet or heels. Um, I'm going to almost fall over when I do it and that's okay, and you might say, uh, well, this is a really bad squat. I know, it is. It's not a, it's not an exercise squat. It doesn't have a load on my back, so it's typically okay to do. It's a normal human movement. If your heels raise up, I know I'm out of the camera a little bit. If my heels raise up, then your, your spine will flatten a little bit, which I actually just want to generally round everything on this person, because I really, um, it's, it's easy it's just to round the low back and flex the hips at the same time. And a door jam squat does that. Um, another way to do this too is something we call a frog's pose. Um, this is something that sometimes people need to get a little bit more creative with because uh, they're like, well, my hip doesn't feel good in this position. Okay, make it feel more comfortable. Oh, that's better. Like you just have to tinker with foot position or knee position a little bit. And they sit here and just basically breathe their belly into their thighs is all. Um, usually doing this for a couple minutes actually helps them out. Sorry, helps them out pretty well with things like hip impingement, uh, especially if it's if it's more painful with walking because it seems more like a, uh, a hip extension type of hip pain. But obviously, there's many reasons for hip pain, so I don't I'm generalizing right now because I don't know your specific condition. By the way, always get checked out by a medical provider who knows what they're doing. Uh, does a groin does a groin strain hurt when walking? No, not necessarily. Um, some people actually feel better with walking and um, this kind of goes along the line of I, I kind of use the the general recommendations with people um, when they come into our office of uh, we use the candy analogy um, does it hurt now and later now and later like the candy and so they say well, what do you mean by that and say does it hurt to walk no 
Do you generally feel better after you walk? Yes. Okay. So it doesn't hurt now, such as when walking, or later. Like it generally makes you feel better. So it falls in the criteria where things actually, it sounds pretty good for the person because pain is our guide and it tells us what to do. Um, but it doesn't, if it doesn't follow that criteria, if it hurts to walk and it hurts after walking, then that's a double negative. It doesn't fall within the criteria. Um, and then there's kind of the mid middle of the range where people are like, well, it doesn't hurt when I walk, but it hurts later. Well, then that's unknown at the moment, you know, but most people will feel okay with walking, um, especially if they, if sitting bothers them quite a bit in their groin. Uh, the third question is, uh, what's the fastest way to relieve groin pain? Uh, there is no one single fastest way. Um, there are treatments that you can do to modify and reduce pain. Um, uh, here at Performance Place, we kind of use a, we call it a map a load framework to recover from things like groin pain and back pain and so on. Uh, it's an acronym, MAP, and then uh, a load. I won't get into the last part uh, today. Uh, M means modification of pain, which is things like tissue work and ice and heat and medication. And uh, that's all good. All that stuff works. Um, modification of pain or reducing pain is important. Uh, and it makes it so you can, you, you can move a little bit freer without hesitation. But A means uh, activating the support systems. P is patterning movement. Um, those are all important when recovering from things like this. Um, because a lot of times these certain things don't just happen on accident unless there's trauma. Like there's something that happened over the course of the last months or years that have created this thing to become a problem. Uh, we see it all the time. Um, interestingly, we see a lot of people with hip pain, groin pain, that it doesn't make any logical sense when you think about it. Um, when they have pain, like, so we say, go ahead and squat. And so they squat down, say I got pain on this side. And so they squat in and over the side and you say, well, so why is the person putting weight on the side that hurts? It doesn't make any sense. They should be taking weight away because it hurts, right? It's just like, it's, it hurts to load it. Correct. And so there's a lot of times people will have past problems on this side, such as ACLs and ankle sprains or past sciaticas or things on this side. And so their body just continually starts to, and this is dramatic, but they start, they start to load this um, and they start to disuse, disuse the other side. Um, over the course of time, this can create things like what you see here. Um, it's groin pain created by overuse of that limb. And the easiest way to resolve it is not necessarily treating only the one side that's speaking up, but it's also reloading the other side. And that comes down to patterning. A lot of times you have to pattern movement back, which is the P in the map of load framework. So hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Look at the remainder of the playlist. I know that a lot of the other things you might look up on YouTube or on Google probably have like specific, like is, um, is walking good for groin pain? Yes, definitively yes. I can tell you right now it's incorrect. It'll answer always depends. It depends on the scenario, the situation, and your goals. We don't know, and today walking might be fine for it, but tomorrow it might not be, or vice versa. There's always a depends. Um, and that's the value of having someone look at you and work with you on conditions like this is because they help you gather information and figure out what to do with you, not with everybody. Because what you have going on is probably a little different than everybody else. We all know we're unique, uh, and our conditions are you're a little bit unique too. Nobody is 100% textbook. Uh, contact us below or check out any of the free stuff that we have for you and um, keep learning. I hope you guys improve and see you guys next time.